Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you guys everything that I have been making in the month of June. So it's been really, really hot this month and I did not get to as much knitting as I was hoping to. Um, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself and just enjoy the new hobby and go at the pace that I'm comfortable with instead of like pushing myself to make too much. Um, I did manage to finish two sweaters this month, one I planned on and one that I didn't, as well as a pair of socks. So the first one that I'm wearing here is the balloon sweater pattern from Petite Knits. So I have knit this up in a combination of two yarns. It is Drops Flora, which is like a fingering weight yarn that's like a mix of alpaca and wool. Uh, and then I held that with Drops Kid Silk, which is obviously like a mohair and silk blend. So the Flora, the color was pistachio, and in the Kid Silk, the color was sage, I believe. Um, and I really, really like the color that it turned out with. It's like a nice muted green color, very similar to my eyes. So, um, Happy with the color. The fabric isn't quite as soft as I thought it was going to be, uh, but it's not too bad. It's it, it's just not like bunny soft um, and it's quite warm. I'm actually like burning up right now. So I'm hoping I'll be able to keep it on for the rest of this video. But if I might have a quick wardrobe change in the middle if I just feel like I'm dying. Uh, so in terms of this pattern, I didn't realize it that this was rated like a five out of five difficulty. I just picked it because I liked how it looked. Um, and so it was a little bit more challenging than I was expecting it to be. The construction is really interesting. You start in the round on the neck band and then you start doing like short rows. And the short rows are actually, they just you just do two, two increases instead of like four, which is what you normally do for raglan. And it sort of makes this like shoulder seam. So the increases sort of make like this shoulder seam here because you do it both on the right sides and the wrong sides. So I understand why I had to do so many short rows to get that shoulder length long enough, but I actually feel like the back of this sweater sits up too high. Like there's too many short rows in there. I'm getting some like folding up around the neck band because it's like there's more fabric there than there is space. Uh, so I don't love the neck fit on this one. Um, and then, yeah, then you just do the front and the back flat on needles and then you join at the underarm and continue in the round. Um, and then this one has sort of like straight sleeves. And then once you get to the bottom of the sleeves, there's like a bunch of decreases around the wrist to get that sort of like balloon shape. So I'm hoping you can see that there and then just a really tight cuff on here. Uh, so this has four inches of ribbing on the cuff as well as the bottom of the sweater. I do really like that beefy ribbing. I think it looks nice. So this is it my favorite sweater in terms of fit just because I think like the back neck feeling a little high is weird to me but I do like how it turned out and it'll definitely get some wear out of it. So the second sweater that I made this month was not in my plans video. Um, I just decided this is what I really wanted to work on instead so that's what I did and this is the Sheep Happens sweater. So this is a free pattern from Drops Design and I really like how it turned out. I used all drops uh, yarn in this as well. The top portion is Drops Lima, which is an alpaca and wool blend, and the colorway is blush. And then the sheep, like the face and the body, and then the rest of this is done in the yarn called Drops Puna, which is 100% alpaca. And the alpaca is really nice and soft and fluffy, like the sheep feel really nice and squishy, which I like that a lot. So I made the smallest size in this pattern. Um, normally I would make a medium. And the reason why I did that is because it didn't, like the, both the small and medium are cast on the same and done all the, the same all the way through the color work. And it's not until like here where you have more increased rows for the size medium. So it felt like this was all going to fit the same. It's just the body would be bigger if I had done a medium. I would say that the body is loose enough, but I'm too tight up in my shoulder area. Um, and that wouldn't have changed if I had gone up a size. So I think where the sheep are is a little bit tight because it's color work. It, it looks fine when it's worn. I, it's just that like me wearing it, I feel tight. I'm just not accustomed to stuff fitting 
like that or sweaters to fit that tight. So that's a little disappointing. I still think I'll wear it. Um, I will say when I blocked this, the blush yarn did bleed a little bit in the water, but it doesn't look like it struck on any of like the white sheep. So I'm okay with the fact that it bleeds. Uh, but I just need to make sure that I, I wash this by itself, hand wash this by itself with not anything else, just because I don't want to dye anything else that sort of red color. But yeah, here is the Sheep Happens sweater. And then the last bit of knitting I did was my first pair of socks. So the yarn here is another Drops yarn, and this is Drops Fable, and the colorway is called Unicorn Party. So these are toe up vanilla socks with an afterthought heel. So um, I did the first sock, I, I think I was working on this last month when I had my last video. Um, so I finished this one and then I was kind of like really disappointed with it. And I didn't work on it again until the very end of the month due to the second sock. Um, so the second sock turned out a lot better. I found like the heel that I had done on my first sock was way too long. Uh, and I, I have since gone and fogged that back and fixed it so the heel fits a little bit better. But I liked, I do like how the afterthought heel works with stripes because it feels like it like continues that pattern all the way along. My mom's been making me some socks with a flegal heel and though like those, that heel fits me a lot better, but I think it doesn't look great with stripes because of the way it's constructed. So I did that and then the toe shape, this first one I did much too gentle of a, um, increase on the toe shape here. So the second time around, I messed with it a little bit more trying to do a different shape. This one is still not perfect, but it's a lot closer to my actual toe shape. So I think I wanna work on that a little bit more. As I had said, I sort of like fixed the heel on this one. Uh, it's not too bad. It's not perfect. I mean, I do have some other sock patterns that I want to try, but I think, I think I might just mess around a little bit and work on my toe shape before I do the next sock pattern. I can't say that I like love socks. I don't wear them super often. If I'm, if I'm gonna wear them at all, it's gonna be like just on my feet in the house, like not necessarily in shoes out and about, but just like keep warm in the winter. So those are the socks. So as I mentioned, that is all of the knitting that I got to this month. The sort of the rest of the things I did this month was all swimwear because it was really, really hot and all I wanted to make was swimsuits. So I have a bunch to show you um, and let's dive into it. So the first one I have made, this is a pattern that I've made previously. This is the pattern called Tie from Bikini Design Club. Um, and I have done it in this really nice sort of like ivory color way. Uh, I like ivory as instead of like stark white on me, just because I have, I tend to have like warmer undertones on my skin. So I think ivory looks a little bit better than, than like an optic white. Uh, so for this time around, I think I increased the length an additional inch over the last one that I've made. So in total, see, I added two and a half, two, three, four, I think I've added like seven or eight inches to the torso length in this pattern to make it fit me a little bit better. This time around also, I changed the neckline a little bit. The original pattern has like a V-neck and I changed it to be more like a squarish scoop neck. Um, I just think it's a little bit more flattering on me and a little bit easier to do, easier to sew. And then I also added some foam cups on the lining of this swimsuit, just because in the lighter colored ivory, I wanted to make sure that it didn't have anything showing if this got wet. So I, d I didn't add those in the other suit that I made. Happy how this turned out. Obviously the star of this pattern is the back. It has a nice um, wide strap that crosses in the back, so it feels really secure, but then it has this really sexy deep low plunge in the back as well. Um, I brought this down a little bit from the last time that I made. I was a little conservative when I made this suit before, thinking that I needed more coverage in the, the, the height of the bottom, but I, I went back down to the original pattern height, um, and I think it looks pretty good. So, very happy with this swimsuit. So, I think that's the only one piece that I made. The rest are all, like, bikinis. 
So I wanted to make sure to make a rash guard this year because I do get a little bit of a rash reaction to sunlight. Uh, used to just be on my chest, but now this year I've been getting it on my arms and my legs. So I wanted to at least keep my arms covered up. So um, I started out with the wave rash guard pattern from Bikini Design Club, and that is this guy here. I believe I made a size 18 in this, which should be my, my size based on the measurements. I tried it on and I wanted something that was fitting a little bit more tighter. So I ended up taking in quite a bit at both of the side seams. And then I also did a dart in the center back here. I don't know if you can see that dart running there, just so that it was sitting a little bit closer to my body and tighter. Um, I went ahead and adjust the pattern so the next time I don't have to do that. So this rash guard goes together really, really fast. It's unlined. Uh, it does have some like set-in sleeves, which looks pretty nice. And then it has some elastic along the waistband and the uh, wrists and the neckline. Uh, so this one, I think, I believe it comes in like a cropped length and then like a full length down to your hips. And I... I think I printed out the full length down to your hips pattern and then I cut it off at my natural waist just because that's where I wanted it to hit. So I made a little, like I kind of went, split the difference in between the two lengths that the pattern offers, but that was a relatively easy thing, just drawing a line through the middle. Um, so this is the rash guard. And then to go with this guy, I made a quick little bikini. So the top is the Jace pattern from Edgewater Avenue. And I believe this is a free pattern. I think you just have to like sign up for her newsletter and then you get this pattern. So very quick and simple. Uh, just, you know, little lined top with some straps and there's no closures on the back. It just pull over your head. Uh, I quite like this style top underneath the rash guard because you don't really see anything sticking out. You'll see some other tops that I've made this month where I think they look really gorgeous as a swimsuit, but underneath the rash guard, it kind of looks funny because you have lots of lumps and bumps. So this was the Jace top from Edgewater Avenue. And then for the bottoms, I did um, just my self-drafted bottom on here. So I used coordinating fabric, this sort of like sea foamy green, and then I picked up that same blue that was in the rash guard to do all of my bound edges on the bottom and top so that these sort of like complement each other and go together. Uh, this particular rash guard matches two or three of the suits that I made last year. So it definitely has some more versatility than just wearing with this set. So next up, I made a bikini in the in a dark jade colorway. Um, this material I was purchased from the Fabric Fairy, I believe, and I think it's called dark, not dark jade, dark mint, I believe. Was, so I used my Emerald Erin Black Beauty bra to make this swimsuit, um, and I have some videos that I did a couple years ago, which I can link up in the iCards above, that you know go you go through the motions of how to convert a bra pattern into a swimsuit, particularly this pattern. Um, I made two of these swimsuits last year, I believe, and they are some of my favorites, so I wanted to make one more. Uh, so yeah, just so it's a, obviously it's a bra pattern, so it has a lot of support. Uh, and then I do sort of like a cross back, so it has two straps. Uh, one set of straps that just goes straight front to back and then one set of straps that crosses in the center back. I really like a cross center back, especially on my bathing suits because it makes them feel a lot more secure um, because I like jumping and playing and, and riding waves and doing all the things in the water. I'm definitely an active water person. I don't just like sit still and, and read a magazine. So that's the top and then the bottoms again is just that self-drafted pattern, quite plain. Um, did them with bound edge in that same dark mint. So after making this suit, I definitely needed a rash guard to go with it. Unfortunately, I did not have enough fabric left over to do a rash guard all in the jade colorway. So I decided I was gonna do some color blocking. Uh, the wave rash guard is a set in sleeve. I don't particularly like the look of color blocking with a set in sleeve. So I went for a different pattern on this and this is the Taylor swimsuit from Rad Patterns, uh, which has a raglan style sleeve. This one's super, super size inclusive. I wanna say it goes to like a three or four X, extra, extra small all the way to three or four XL. So super size inclusive. I think that 
My measurements put me in a size medium, but when I measured the pattern itself, I decided to go for a size large because it looked like a size large was gonna be about an 8% negative ease. Um, an 8% negative ease is where I like to sit in terms of tightness. I think if I had made a medium, it would have been much too tight. So for this one, I have that dark mint in the center, uh, and then I used this neon green for the neckband and the arms. I did make a little bit of mistake when I was showing this up. I couldn't tell which was the front and which was the back, so I ended up putting um, the seam on the center front instead of the center back, which is kind of a shame, but it's way too much to unpick, so I'm just gonna leave it like there and be fine with it. Uh, in terms of alterations to this pattern, like I said, I, use, I choose a size up than my measurements would be, and then I also changed the neckband slightly. I made it shorter and like shorter in height, and then I also cut it a little bit shorter in length. Uh, what I did is I just measured how big my neck hole was, and then I made the neckband 85% of that. Um, and the reason I did that is because I, my preference for a neckband is to have it sitting nice and flush against the body uh, versus I think the way that this pattern is designed, it's more of like a funnel neck. And I just don't like that look. So I decided to make something like this, which is more like a traditional like t-shirt in terms of like how that um, neckband cinches up around. <laughs> I think I got some mohair on my nose. How that neckband cinches up around your neck. But incredibly happy with how this turned out. Um, I, I did it, it wasn't quite long enough on me. So I ended up doing like a, a, a wide, like inch and a half band along the bottom of, of this as well, just to give me some additional length. The next one I made, I just cut the pattern longer so I didn't have to worry about that. So this one, I absolutely love. I think it's gonna be one of my favorite swimsuits for this year. I liked how the dark mint suit went with this, uh, but I, I love this combination of the electric green with that dark mint. So I went ahead and made a, another swimsuit in that green color. So that can also be worn with the same rash guard. So now I have two suits to wear the same one. Uh, this one is very similar to one I showed you before. It is that Jace pattern from Edgewater Avenue on the top. Uh, and then I've done a much thicker, I think this is like one and three eighths inch band on the bottom. Cause I was try trying to see if this gave me more support. I actually prefer how the, the original pattern is written with just like a, a single band along the bottom, single elastic band. I think this one's actually more comfortable than this one with the thicker band, but it was something I wanted to try out. And then for the bottoms of these, I actually was loving the tie swimsuit that I made, that ivory one, so much that I sort of like pulled the bottoms off of that pattern and made my own pair of bikini bottoms from that pattern. So it's the same shape. Obviously, I've raised it up a little bit in the back so it doesn't have that deep scoop in the back. But I think these fit really well and they have like that very high high cut like 90s style that I'm absolutely in love with. It comes up to my natural waist, which I think looks really flattering. Um, so I, <laughs> I love this swimsuit a lot and I think it looks really fun with this rash guard. And then last up I have, I love that rash guard. So I wanted just like a classic black suit as well. So I did um, that same Taylor swimsuit in uh, straight black. And I like this one a lot. It makes me feel like a Bond girl. I don't know why, um, but yeah, just black rash guard with those, again, raglan sleeves, fits really well. I cut this one a little bit longer in the body, so it does hit me at the natural waist without having to add that extra material. Uh, the bottom of this one is just sewn over and zigzagged, so there's no elastic in the bottom. I'll have to see going in the water if it like um, scooches up or at all because I think I might need elastic in the waist just to keep it sitting still and when you're in the water because obviously when it gets wet, it sort of like stretches out a little bit, but we'll see. And I did the same thing I did with the green bottoms of, of pulling that tie swimsuit one piece bottom out and making a pair of bikini bottoms with it and that really high cut um, style with that center back scene that has like a nice curve. I just think it fits really well. So that is all of the swimsuits that I made this month. 
So now on to my plans for the month of July. So I have two works in progress, one that I definitely wanna finish and one that I'm not so enthusiastic about. So the one that I'm definitely gonna finish is the gold wing sweater from Jennifer Steingass. Uh, this is a really, really pretty sweater pattern. I saw somebody on Ravelry do it with these exact yarns and I just had to have it. Like it looked so gorgeous. So the top of the sweater is Malabrigo Rios in the colorway teal feather. And the bottom of the sweater is using the drops Lima, which as I had mentioned before is an alpaca wool blend. And this is the color light beige, I believe. The color number is 5310. I think it's light beige. Uh, it is not a color combination that I would have ever arrived at on my own. But when I saw the sweater finished, I was like, oh, this is so pretty and had to have it. So I started this yesterday. I've gotten, I don't know, probably like 10 or 10 or 12 rows into the color work design. I think there's like 55 rows of color work. So I have a few more days of color work ahead of me, but really liking how it's looking so far. I really like the idea that it's only going to take one skein of the Rios to make this sweater. So you get like the, the look and uniqueness of that hand dyed yarn um, without breaking the bank because you only used I'm only going to use one in the entire sweater and then a much cheaper yarn is going to make up the bulk of the sweater so I'm really excited about this one um, yeah I think it's going to be pretty so I can see me finishing this relatively quickly and then the second work in progress I have, uh, so I, I had pulled out this yarn last month is something that I wanted to make. And this is the Drops Alpaca Silk. Uh, I didn't really enjoy knitting with it. So I was planning on doing a Drops pattern called Tornade, which was a free pattern. I pulled up the pattern, I looked at it, and it was like foreign language to me. So I've obviously I've used some of their free patterns before and I didn't have any problem, but for some reason that pattern, I could not figure it out. So I decided to go for a different pattern instead. And this is going to be the Cumulus blouse. I think it's the blouse from um, Petite Knits. I like the fabric that it's making. I think it looks really interesting. Um, it has a lot of texture. It's nice and light and fluffy. Um, it looks like, I mean, it looks kind of see-through because you end up using quite thick needles for how thin the, the yarn it is, but I think, I think it'll be fine. I don't think it'll be that see-through. And I actually really like this light rust color against my skin. I think it's very complimentary. But as I had said, I just really dislike knitting with this. So I don't know that it's something that's going to fly off my needles. I've been trying to tell myself like after I finish a project, I'll just put a couple rows into this one and eventually it'll get done. But um, it's taking me some time just because I don't enjoy knitting with it but it is a nice color and I think it would be a great summer sweater because it's so lightweight. Um, so this one has an awful lot of knitting flat um, to form that V-neck and then it, it goes in the round. And then I believe it's finished with like an I-cord edge, which you've never done before. So I'm excited to learn the I-cord. But yeah, as I said, this project, I'm not super motivated to finish it quickly because I hate working with the yarn. So I'm just gonna do little bits here and now and then and eventually it'll get done. So those are the two sweaters that I'm working on. Um, I assume there will also be some either swimsuit or bra making this month, but I'm not, I'm trying not to put too much pressure on myself and just, you know, make whatever tickles my fancy in that particular day and not feel pressured into anything. Um, so we'll see what happens, but that is everything that I've been up to. Um, I didn't buy any yarn, which is very good for me <laughs> and my bank account. So I don't have any new acquisitions to show you, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will see everybody next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.